limit point in this picture that goes off forever. Can you think of a subset? Well, well does this picture suggest one? Yeah, how about some set that just keeps going off forever? I don't know why I'm yelling like that. OK, but let's see. How can I make this precise? Would you agree this is an infinite subset that has no limit point? Why does it not have a limit point the way I've drawn it? Because I can surround it by balls that all only cover exactly one point. Something like that, yes? OK, this is the idea. How do I say this? Well, if k is not bounded, then we're just going to choose a sequence such that uh, the, the absolute value of, this, of, of the, the nth point is bigger than n. How's that? Are you happy with that? This is in, R, in Rn. You can make the distance from the origin be bigger than n. Yes? So all these points are like points that are on one side of you know, this is distance 2, this is distance 3, this is distance 4, distance 5, distance 6 from the origin. Yes? Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, wait a minute. Maybe the point you pick beyond 3 is actually like, is actually like, um, you know, close to the fourth point, right? Or maybe the points 5 and 6 are actually close to the seventh point. Why is that not a problem with this argument? Yeah, this thing's not going to have a limit point clearly because if it did, that point would have to be somewhere, yes? Maybe between the millionth and millionth and oneth radius. But what do we show? Why can't that be a limit, a limit point? Because in the neighborhood of a limit point, you must have what? It, infinitely many points, and you only have finally many uh, that are to the left of a million and one, right? That's the argument. So this is uh, this. These have no limit point. Uh, and I'm just going to let you. I, ju I just said the argument. I'll let you check that for yourself. Okay. The neighborhood of a limit point must have infinitely many points of the set, but any point here has only finitely many points that could be uh, near it. OK, good. So that shows that k is bounded. Suppose k is not, uh, suppose you want to show it's closed. If it's not closed, how can we get a contradiction in this situation? So this picture is like this. Here's k, and it's not closed. OK, uh, whatever edge means. But you just mean take a limit point that's not in set, that's not in k, yes? Yes? But then any neighborhood around it has a what? A point of k in it, yes? So pick one. And now what? How do I, how do, how do I get like a whole bunch of points that accumulate on p? Good. Keep taking smaller and smaller radii that that go the radii the radii go to zero, and pick points inside. So if k is not closed, uh, there exists a p, not in k, that is a limit point of v. And now choose x n such that the distance from x n to z is less than 1 over n. That, that would do. And this, this, so this, uh, this set, xn, has no limit point. Uh, has a limit point at p. And what's the other thing you'd have to show? Not only does it have a limit point at p, but you're trying to show this has no limit point in e. Why does this have no limit point in e? Is it possible for it to have a limit point that's p, but also maybe something else? Hopefully not, right? Can you see why that's the case? Why can 
why must do these points the way I've constructed them only have one limit point? Well, if it had two limit points, those limit points would have some distance between them. And then it cannot be the case that this sequence is, is getting closer to one and the other at the same time, because at some point the triangle inequality would break. Right? That's the idea. It has a little entity and no other. I'll leave it at that. But this is a sketch of a proof. See, we drew a couple of sketches. Here's the sketch. Um, but you obviously would want to justify this more carefully. Okay. Okay. But the important thing here is sort of to get the idea. All right. This has a very, very uh, simple corollary, and that corollary is the following, which is sometimes known as the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem. Some of you have seen Bolzano Weierstrass before. Uh, which basically says that every bounded subset of uh, Rn has a limit point. Clearly, I mean in Rn as well. Now, why is this a corollary? Rn, is Rn compact? No, it's not compact. So I can't just apply this theorem. I claim that every bounded subset, uh, uh, sorry, infinite, better be infinite, which I think is maybe what Jenny was going to suggest. Yes, that's right, thanks. It should be infinite subset. Uh, so Rn is not compact, but what? You give me a bounded subset that lives in a, a, a compact K cell. Right? So it's, it, the boundedness gives you what you need. So proof uh, if uh, the subset E is bounded, then E is in some compact K cell. And uh, therefore, what? It's an infinite subset of a compact set, and therefore it has a limit point. So it has a limit point uh, by the previous theorem. Uh, it's uh, a bounded subset of a compact set, so it has a limit point uh, in, uh, in the, in the K-cell. Okay, another big theorem that uh, wasn't too bad to show once you uh, once you develop some machinery. Okay, and we uh, did the forward direction. Uh, we used the forward direction. Uh, no, we used the backward direction. Okay, so for an arbitrary or for Rn, we've shown it. Okay, and it's true in general, and that's in one of the exercises. All right, let me finish with. Um, Another characterization of compactness, and this is a theorem due to Cantor, uh, and uh, it's sometimes you refer to it uh, as the finite intersection property. So um, suppose you have a bunch of sets, K alpha, and they're compact subsets uh, of some metric space, some arbitrary metric space X. It's a collection of compact subsets. Here's a theorem. The theorem says if any finite subcollection uh, has, okay, so this is a bunch of sets, but if you take any finite number of them and you in intersect 